So if you're coming from video one, part one, this is part two, where we're going to deploy a CloudFormation template and resources in AWS using CloudFormation uh, using Ansible from uh, your local machine, right? So in the last video, we set up an Ubuntu box with the prerequisite software and the AWS credentials. We pulled in a Git repo called Ansible from my GitHub, which has um, the CloudFormation template, the variables, and the playbook we're going to use. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink that. I've SSH'd into the VM on my, here because it's a lot easier to edit playbooks and CloudFormation templates using Visual Studio Code because I can go over here. Once I'm SSH'd into my box, I can open folder. And then I've opened the Ansible folder on the Ubuntu box that I'm SSH'd into over here. And I can view my files. I can edit my files. I can hit control Z to undo whatever I do. I can save it. It makes things a lot easier than moving around and vimming all my files. <laughs> so let's, this video is about, you know, we're just kind of going to go over the playbook and the CloudFormation template and the servers and what it all means, right? So we're going to start with the playbook, right? So the playbook is going to go ahead and it's going to run against the host group servers. Now, because we're not actually configuring any servers, we're creating servers from scratch. Um, because I'm using a static inventory, I just have to define a server group and I have to put a server name in it. Because I'm not using a dynamic inventory for simplicity's sake, um, this, is, this is how we got to do it. I'm going to pass in two variable files and all vars and a server vars. And all vars is going to contain variables that are consistent across all my CloudFormation stacks, right? Like US East 1 is my region. If I'm deploying every CloudFormation stack in this region, I don't have to define it in all my different variable files. I just have to define it in one and use that for all of my playbooks. And then server vars is obviously, uh, it's for just my servers, right? So if I was going to launch maybe a single sign-on application, I would have different I would have different variables just in that variable file for that single sign-on uh, application or server. And then maybe I was going to launch a guacamole application. So then I would have another variables file with variables specific to that application or server, right? And when I say specific to, I mean server name, right? Um, if I define server name in all of ours and I use it for everything, I'm going to have to go in and I'm going to have to change it every time I deploy a stack. Whereas if I define it in a separate file specific to that stack. Um, I just set it once and I leave it. Server name for server one, server name two for server two. Um, this part you can ignore, this is for dynamic inventory, um, which we're not using. Um, but there's a CloudFormation module in Ansible and it's really handy. It lets you define your stack name. It lets you define the path to the CloudFormation template. And it lets you define these parameters. So the stack name is going to be the CloudFormation stack name, obviously, that you'll see in CloudFormation once you launch the stack. Um, your disable rollback is true, right? I don't, I don't want to rollback because if it fails uh, and I have this set to false, it'll roll it back and I won't be able to go into CloudFormation and see the failure and look at the event and view what resources might have stopped and why. Um, template is, obvious, again, the file. Uh, the CloudFormation template location. So I have it in files over here, CloudFormation template. And I have these different parameters. Um, so if you go to the CloudFormation template, right, any CloudFormation template you have, you're going to define parameters. And parameters are going to be things you have to define in one way or another as a string or a drop down list. So uh, if I were to launch a CloudFormation template manually, right, in AWS, and I define an image parameter. I would have to type in my image uh, ID or as a string, or if I had defined the parameters in a list, I would have to pick from the list as a dropdown. Um, so if you define any parameters here in the CloudFormation template, then you must also define those uh, parameters here on the CloudFormation module in your Ansible playbook. So you can see I have AWS zone here in the Ansible playbook. And I also have AWS zone here as a parameter in the confirmation template. And then instead of having to manually input those uh, parameters, right? 
Ansel is going to fill them in for me using variables that I define. It's going to pass those variables in, right? And that's where the variable files come in. So I launch a confirmation template. I have an AWS zone parameter. Uh, a cloud formation is like, hey, I see you have an AWS zone parameter. What do you want to put in here? What is your zone ID? What zone do you want to use? Cloud formation module also has AWS zone parameter. And it's going to take this variable, whatever I've defined here, and it's going to fill in uh, that box with the parameter that I've defined. And I define the zone in all dot, uh, all vars.yaml as US East 1A or US East 1B, depending on the server. And so that's the parameter it's going to use. Um, and then, so that's the playbook in a nutshell. Just make sure if you define a parameter in the confirmation template that you have defined the parameter in the playbook and that you have set a variable for the parameter you have defined in one of these variable files. Um, so then we'll go down here. Um, server. So we're going to launch two servers, one in each availability zone. And we're also going to launch, uh, create two private records, DNS, A records, uh, and a security group. So I'm referencing these parameters, right? So server one is going to use the image parameter that I define. It's going to use a key pair name, instance type, some tags. Uh, it's going to have a public IP address. It's going to reference Ansible security group, which I'm going to create at the bottom. Uh, but CloudFormation knows that because this is server one and server two are dependent on the security group, it's going to build the security group first. My root volume information, EBS key to encrypt that root volume, server two is the same. However, some of the parameters change, right? I can't use the same server name for both servers or they'll have the same server name. If I want two different availability zones, I can't reference the same AWS zone parameter. I have to have AWS zone and AWS zone X, in this case two, defined so I can define two availability zones. Uh, we're going to create two private records, A records, right? Um, they're going to be the server name that I define there. Again, they're referencing the server name parameter. So then when the playbook runs, the playbook is going to look for the server name parameter, which I've defined in a variable here as server name, and it's going to use that for the server name. Um, and then I'm going to create a security group, and I'm just going to add port 22 and the default egress ports and some tags. And CloudFormation knows that if a resource within your template is dependent on another resource within your template, it will be build those in order, right? So like I said, server one is dependent here on it. Uh, Ansible security group, which I haven't defined as a parameter because it doesn't exist yet, but it will be built down here. So CloudFormation knows that it will build the security group first and then it will build the server, just like it can't build my private DNS records unless I've already built the instances that uh, for those records. So it will build instances, no, oh, it will build security group, then it will build instances, then it will build uh, the DNS records. So in part three, we'll go through uh, the variables and we'll, we'll kind of walk through AWS and change those variables and then we'll go ahead and run the playbook. I'll see you there.